Hello and welcome to Blytheway Business News. Today we're talking about something a bit different. We're going to be talking about cannabis. Um, for a couple of years now, this has been touted as the, the new and emerging market to take London stock markets by storm. Well, today we're lucky, lucky enough to have with us the man who may have all the answers to that. Uh, and we're pleased to welcome Stephen Murphy. Stephen is Managing Director of Prohibition Partners, one of the leading agencies talking, thinking, and knowing about cannabis. Stephen, welcome to the show. Um, give us a quick overview about Prohibition Partners. What, what is it that you do do? Thanks, uh, Tim, and thank you for having me. Um, Prohibition Partners is data intelligence and strategic consultancy for the global cannabis industry. So we work with operators, with regulators, we work with investors, and we work with uh, those who want to better understand what is happening in the global cannabis space. So over the last over the last four or five years, we've been tracking um, the developments of emerging and certainly the more mature industries. Okay, so you will know better than anybody, I think it was about two years ago, uh, on the back of what had happened in the Canadian market, uh, a number of companies looked at London, and we should point out for the benefit of viewers, we're talking here only about medicinal cannabis, the stuff that people can use as a as a wellness treatment, uh, or to even look at things like cancer or, or other severe medical problems. Uh, they were look, we're looking at companies providing medicinal cannabis coming to list in the London market. And for a bunch of reasons, they were not successful, but there's been a recent change. And the Financial Conduct Authority has changed its guidelines and it seems to be that these companies can now come and list in London. Can you explain what's gone on and what it means for potential investment in medicinal cannabis in the UK? Yeah, I think the recent update or announcement from the FCA is, is, is most welcome and certainly positive. I don't think they've changed anything per se, but they've maybe given some clarification as to what they're willing to accept. Um, there is obviously great interest in this because access to capital for cannabis companies remains a challenge and growing an industry from scratch uh, is quite capital intensive. So developing the infrastructure all the way through to route to patient, it, it's capital intensive, as I said, and access to capital in the UK or around Europe for cannabis, where it is still very much a new emerging industry, is quite hard to come by. So you, we saw in North America uh, what access to capital markets afforded the North American industry. So rapid growth, uh, its ability to quickly establish its infrastructure, uh, the emergence of lots of corporate activity, and certainly the emergence of lots of R&D. I think for the UK, it's it's exceptionally positive because one, it gives clarification uh, to those companies who have better parameters on um, on if they're applicable, first of all, and two, it positions London as a, a center or a capital for the European cannabis industry. Well, okay, great news for London, great news for people looking for a new market. I suppose new markets lead us to my next question, because you know we've all been, you know, you're at home, I'm obviously doing this interview from home. As a result of COVID, uh, COVID has caused all kinds of economic problems globally. Do you think cannabis uh, and you know, its access to stock markets now is going to do anything to get us out of economic um, problems? Yeah, I think it, it's probably a bit of a big claim to uh, to say cannabis will be the cure for COVID and COVID related issues. But I do think, you know, there is a major upside in that cannabis is a true growth industry. Uh, I, 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 I say time and again, if you put cannabis on a growth curve, it's at the very, very start of that curve. Uh, and for that, you know, we are seeing the upside of cannabis in maybe the more mature markets. So from Israel to Australia, multiple states in the US, even Canada, they're seeing record monthly and annual sales 
in cannabis related products. Earlier this year, when COVID happened, cannabis was, was marked as an essential good in the US. So we are seeing a massive upside in the demand from cannabis and a growing consumer base in terms of those who consume it uh, for, for, for whatever the, the, the purposes, be it medicinal or adult use. Now you mentioned North America there, and of course, North America has been in the news for the last few days with the uh, the election, hopefully the election of a president. We'll see how that plays out in, in the coming days and weeks. Um, but let's assume that uh, Mr. Biden's victory is confirmed. Um, is that a positive for cannabis? And if so, can you explain why? Yeah, what, 100%. Cannabis was on the ballot in six states, uh, in six states last week, and it was a clean sweep. Uh, like a clean sweep of, of results in terms of the numbers coming out overwhelmingly in favor of legalization. The average was around 62% uh, in favor of legalization in those six states. Now, five, were for, five, five for, were for adult use, one was for medical and adult use. But we have uh, a new government, well, <laughs> I'm not going to speak too early, but we should have a new, a new government and a new president-elect uh, coming into the White House in January. I think cannabis is maybe a little bit bipartisan as well. If you look at the number of states in the U.S. where cannabis is actually legal, uh, one in three adults in the U.S. will soon be able to get access to legal cannabis. Now, federally, no matter who is in government, they're going to need to have some overview and control over that. So I think the having a Democratic uh, president and a Democratic potentially Senate, uh, we'll see come runoff in, in January. Yes, that is definitely in favor as um, that is the, the base and the outlook for the Democratic Party leans more towards cannabis reform. And a number of senators have been responsible for enacting cannabis reform. You saw, you saw on, on, on Friday in the US, uh, last week in the US, when it came out that Joe Biden was in fact president-elect, the stock markets went, and the cannabis stock markets that is, went through the roof. Uh, some reporting upwards of 30 to 40% in a single day. Now it's, it's not unlike the stock markets in, in, in cannabis to yo-yo a bit, uh, that's uh, have become expected with the emerging market, but, the wave of positive sentiment as a result of a democratic uh, democratic president and the potential for major cannabis reform, not just the simple legislation updates, but something more meaningful and lasting, is is, is explosive and explosive not just for the U.S. but for, for for globally. Okay, so America looking at legalizing all kinds of cannabis, but in the U.K. we're still focused on medicinal cannabis. And you, just to recap, you you think. Um, this is going to be a new opportunity for investors to, to get into a new market with medicinal cannabis in the UK? Oh, what, 100%. I think for those who are looking at a true growth market, cannabis uh, represents a very exciting opportunity because it's not just limited to pure play pharmaceutical, but cannabis has tentacles, if you will, into healthcare, into wellness, into food, into drink, into pet care. And that is one of the most exciting areas uh, for, for those wanting to invest in cannabis is that there are multiple paths and multiple areas in which uh, the cannabis space is going to grow and which investments you know, are, 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 are going to take hold. So if you have a portfolio in healthcare, if you have a portfolio in F&B, uh, cannabis presents potential disruption, but is also a new area to explore. And, and, and I think what happened with the FCA coming out and updating their, their um, position on cannabis has been a, a massive tick or accreditation into the legitimacy of cannabis and the fact that cannabis should be recognized as a credible investment uh, a, a stream. Now, Stephen, uh, you at uh, Prohibition Partners have got a conference coming up soon. Tell us something about that, please. Yeah, sure. So over the years, we've been very fortunate to um, gather industry stakeholders and, and key opinion leaders together to discuss the future of the industry. And on the 17th to the 20th of November, uh, which is next week, uh, we return with our virtual conference, Prohibition Partners Live, where we'll be bringing together 100 uh, 
key stakeholders and thought leaders to talk on the global cannabis industry. So they will range from Republican and Democratic politicians in the US to discuss uh, cannabis reform. It'll, you will have members of the London Stock Exchange talking about the, the future listing. You will have major family offices talking about their investment strategy and their investment portfolio and why. And you will have uh, budding entrepreneurs and operators showcasing why what they are doing in the industry is going to be world leading and uh, has merit for, for, for years to come. If a viewer watching this um, wanted to attend your virtual conference, uh, what should they do? Yeah, I think, you know, we've made it as straightforward as possible for those at home uh, to be able to engage and, and, uh, and be entertained by the content on offer. So for those wanting to attend, simply go to prohibitionpartners.live uh, for where you'll be able to get access to the event. Uh, you'll be able to, the event is on from Tuesday to Friday and uh, with a different topic each day uh, focused on content. So from policy to investment to culture and innovation, uh, there should be something for everybody. Stephen, thank you for joining us. That was Stephen Murphy, Managing Director of Prohibition Partners, uh, giving us an overview of the opportunities which should present themselves for investors looking at the uh, medicinal cannabis market here in the UK. That's all from Blytheway Business News for today. Thanks for watching.